Hi guys and welcome to Dark Soul, an empath's guide to your dog's feelings. Are you living with a group of dogs and one or more are leash reactive, so lunging, barking, growling at other dogs on leash? Today we're going to talk about leash reactivity in a multi-dog household, so stay tuned and have fun! Alright, so Leash reactivity is something that can be extremely annoying. It can be embarrassing to have the one dog in the neighborhood that goes crazy whenever he sees another dog. It can be frightening because you never know. Is there something going to happen? What if the leash slips out of my fingers? What if he grows up a little more and gets even stronger. What if my other dogs adopt that behavior and then you have not one but two going crazy on leash? And this is something that happens very often. Group dynamics are a real SOB, right? <laughs> Our dogs learn from each other and they learn things that make sense to them. And if we have one dog that is a little bit insecure and really it only takes a little bit and another who goes crazy when he sees another dog, the insecure one will adopt that behavior sooner or later. And especially if you have big dogs, it can be a real challenge to hold them, to secure them, to walk them because especially when there are a lot of encounters on your walks, the dogs get more and more tense sooner and sooner. So in the end, you have a dog who, the moment he steps outside, tenses up and is always looking for the next dog and is always looking for the next reason to go crazy and can't enjoy the walk and can't enjoy all the smells he could sniff and this is really not a good thing for the dog either so our dogs need to explore the world our dogs need that opportunity to smell everything and to find out who is there and who is in their neighborhood who they could meet and there are so many things we don't know what dogs smell out there but it has to be interesting right and when a dog is stuck on oh my god where's the next dog and can't relax enough to be a dog it's not only difficult for us it's also putting a strain on the dog because those walks are really not helping relaxation but increasing the stress level and that's the exact opposite of why we go on walks in the first place, right? We want our dogs to be happy and fulfilled and joyful and walks should help with that. All right, but now that we have established why we should work on leash reactivity and why dogs adopt that behavior so quickly, we need to talk about the specifics of having this in a dog group. So if you know you have a dog with issues when it comes to other dogs on leash and you think about getting another dog, always have in mind that this issue could be transferred to the other dog. So you could end up with two leash reactive dogs. And to avoid this, the most important thing is to work on it separately. So if you want to get a second dog to a leash reactive dog, given that the leash reactive dog is actually friendly with other dogs, because if the leash reactive dog really doesn't like other dogs, the question would be why would you adopt another one? But if your dog actually likes other dogs, as long as they're not on leash and he's not on leash, which is really common, then Maybe you want to get another dog and for various reasons, but you have to be 
aware of the fact that there will be multiple walks because to avoid having two leash reactive dogs in the long run, you need to walk your dog separately. You need walks that are purely training for your leash reactive pup. And those can be really short, right? And sometimes they have to be really short if you live in an environment where there are a lot of other dogs. And this is a training walk. So you're prepared to work on every situation that needs work and to have at best 100% success with dog on dog encounters so your dog doesn't react one time. That won't be possible all the time. Sometimes things happen, but it should be the goal. Now, on these training walks, I would not take the second dog. And your dogs will still need the opportunity to get to know each other and to build a bond with each other. And for that, you can use decompression walks. So take them to an area where you don't meet anybody or at a time where you don't need meet anybody and where they can just be dogs and just do things they want and go sniffing and play with each other if you have a fenced in facility or something like that, a sniff spot to go to. And they can just build a relationship with each other. That's also very important. And if you have already two dogs who are both leash reactive, also take them out separately. Like then you have two dogs who need training works apart from each other. So every dog gets a separate training walk where you can really focus on that one dog and whatever he needs to deal with the situation. And then you go with your other dog and do the same. Because also, even if they are both leash reactive and live in a group, most of the time they have different needs when it comes to dog on dog meetups or encounters on leash. Some dogs need less distance, some dogs need more distance, some dogs need to watch the other dog, other dogs need to just ignore the other dog and focus on you. Some dogs don't know what to do at all. (laughs) And to address all this, it's necessary that we start training separately. At the point where both dogs on their own are fine at a specific distance and it has to be the same then you can start taking them together on training walks but keep in mind this is again a lot more difficult for you as well because you now have to watch both dogs you now have to see those tiny little signals they send out when they start feeling uncomfortable for both dogs and It will happen that you see those signals in one but not the other, even if they have the same distance. Usually, with specific dogs, they will still have different distances. So, whenever you see those signals, like tensing up or leaning a little bit forward, looking a little bit longer, all those things, when you see it in one dog, You need to help both out of the situation because if you just deal with the one dog, at some point your other dog will reach that critical distance and you might not realize it. So as soon as one dog shows any signs, both dogs get helped out of the situation. All right. And it's much easier if both dogs learn the same strategy whatever that strategy might be and it can be adapted a little bit for each dog like for example if you have a livestock guardian breed who wants to watch other dogs at a distance and you have a terrier who wants to get to the other dog and tell him up close that he sucks (laughs) you 
will need distance and if they both need the same distance fine but it can look like something like you're a few feet away and your livestock guardian breed can watch the other dog with taking the eyes off once in a while to not start staring and your terrier gets to pick up treats that you scattered on the ground so you see the more dogs you have out with you who have issues the more complex things get it's not really multitasking because you're only doing one task but you have to be aware a lot more and you have to meet the needs of the dogs as best as you can for each dog and of course it's easier when the dogs have similar needs and very often if the breeds are at least halfway in the same category the needs are more similar than if you have completely different breeds right and sometimes what also happens and that is a real challenge for dog groups if there is frustration involved either because the dogs want to get to the other dog because they want to greet that dog or because they want to scare that dog away or even to bite that dog no matter what motivation if they want to get to the other dog and they can't it's frustrating and what happens sometimes in dog groups when they get frustrated or angry that they turn on each other and that's another thing why it's so important to figure out first what each dog needs, train each dog separately and teach them that they don't have to get angry, they don't have to be frustrated, there are other ways to deal with these situations. And as soon as you're working with both together, you have to really be aware of that distance because it should never get so close that they have to react and they have to feel all those emotions and also if the dogs are possibly going to hurt anybody and it can be the other dog a person each other you they have to wear a muzzle because it can always be something that happens can we can never control everything 100 percent. so if there is a slight danger that your dogs might hurt somebody or themselves they have to wear a muzzle and sometimes this is how training leash reactivity starts in the first place with muscle training and before there is any training for leash reactivity they have to be comfortable wearing a muzzle and sometimes it even takes a while to get a well-fitting muscle because if they are wearing it on every walk, it needs to be really well-fitting. Like they have enough space to yawn and it's a wire muscle because if they try to hurt somebody, only a wire muscle is safe and it doesn't slip left, right or up and down too much. And they cannot get it off if they try to. But again, if they are comfortable wearing it, they shouldn't try to, right? So this is also something that we have to consider when it comes to leash reactivity. And it doesn't mean that the dog is bad or evil or something like that. It's just when emotions run high, things happen and sometimes things get out of control. It's the same thing with people. You can have the friendliest person and if they get triggered by something and the emotions flare really high you can have that person punching a wall or something so the most important thing when dealing with leash reactivity especially when it's in a group in a group of dogs is safety you have to feel safe you have to feel on top of the situation and you have to give your dogs the opportunity to learn and always breaks from the reactivity that's also very important so those decompression walks we talked about those are super important 
for every leash reactive dog. And if they're living in a group, it's important that they make experiences with each other that doesn't include yelling at another dog, right? And sometimes it takes a little bit of creativity to find possibilities for what the compression works, but it's possible. So it also helps us as humans because we also need to make good experiences with our dogs. And we also need walks with our dogs where we can just relax and just enjoy each other's company, right? So why don't you tell me in the comments or in a review if this is something that you are living with and how this helped you. And if you know anybody who can benefit from this episode, send him the link. And don't forget to like and subscribe because that way we can together help even more people and their dogs live a happy and joyful life together. Have a lot of fun training and we'll see each other next time. Bye.